today we're going to be tying the Chewy October Caddis. We're going to start with a Dairiki 135 in a size number 6 or 8. I'm using a size 6 today. Then we're going to add a black nickel bead that's one size smaller than you would typically use. I'm then going to take some 0.015 lead wire or lead wire substitute and wrap it on the hook. And I'm just showing you one of the tricks that I do to minimize the amount of waste. Uh, I, th I put the lead on a old bobbin and wrap it onto the hook and one of the tricks to keep this from breaking is to keep your keep the lead really long as it comes out of the bobbin so it doesn't spin and, and get cut off. Wrap right up to the eye and then break that off and just wrap it underneath. We're then I'm going to push it up underneath the bead just to hold it in place. Then I'm going to take some unistretch thread and just build a bit of a body underneath So get it started and then just create your body underneath using your tag to just guide you along here and build a bit of a taper at the back end of the fly. Sometimes I add a bit of super glue underneath this too, that's totally fine, um, but this really helps secure things underneath. Once you've got that started, then I just start my thread back, clip off the excess, and then I'm going to tie in some orange Antron yarn. There's different colors of this. This is a, a lighter orange. I think it's a good close match to the October Caddis pupa that you see. And I'm going to tie that on top of the hook. Again, just using all the materials to build the fat profile of this. Fairly large bug. Go down again to the bend of the hook. I'm going to wrap up towards the, the middle, put that in the materials holder, and I'm going to prepare to start a dubbing loop. This is a new technique that I came up with. Um, another way to do it is to actually uh, use the Antron yarn and do and place your dubbing in there. This is just much simpler and, and faster to do. So I'm going to create a pretty good sized dubbing loop and I'm going to get some natural hair's ear mask of a light grayish color with the guard hairs. I wax my thread a little bit. This is just beeswax that you can get from any sewing store. And then I'll slide that uh, hair's ear into my dubbing loop. And the idea here is just to, to make a, it as thin as possible. You end up picking most of it out. Um, but you're just trying to get a little bit of dubbing over a fairly um, large dubbing dubbing loop. Once we get that in there, then we'll start to spin that up. Get it nice and tight. And then we're going to brush it out with uh, some Velcro. Start to pick this out. It's pretty. It's still pretty thick at this point. So we'll just tease that out till there's just a few fibers. Pick out some of the thick spots. Keep spinning it up here. It's just much easier to do this separate than trying to do this. Uh, inside of the antron. Once we have a nice thin dubbing noodle, then we're going to take our 
Antron yarn, and we're actually going to line that up with the dubbing noodle, and we're going to spin the two together here. So I'm going to take my thread and just move this back to the tie-in point where the antron exits the rear of the body. And then I'll move my thread forward here just to get it out of the way of everything else. And then I'm going to use some easy hackle pliers. I like to use these when I'm spinning different types of materials. And I'll just kind of wrap the, the two, the antron yarn and the dubbing loop with the thread around those so I so I don't lose those. And another thing good to do there is just trim off all the excess so you're not fighting it. And I'm holding it up here so you can see the idea of what I'm doing. Normally you just let everything hang down below. And I'm just gonna tighten this up to the point where I kinda like the way that it that it looks. Um, so I'm just gonna keep spinning it and spinning it. And the gap where that uh, Here's your rib gets tighter and tighter in on the Entron yarn. And that looks pretty good there. So as you can see, I've got the rib integrated right into that. And I'm going to brush it out just a little bit more. And then I'm just going to wrap, wrap the body on. This just creates a super cool effect that you don't get with just straight the uh, Antron. And we'll just wrap that all the way up the body. And as you can see, the the nice underbody that we've created with the lead and the unistretch thread gives you a really nice taper. We're going to take it almost all the way up to the head, but we're going to leave a little bit of a gap there for us to put a collar on at the end. And once we get up there, then we can just tie that off. And then we can just cut off the excess. And then I'm going to add, this is really an extra step, but it just makes things lay down a little bit nicer. I'm going to pick out a little bit of the, the body there just so it's just nice and thin. And then I'm going to add back in some more Unistretch to get the collar built up. And this just really allows my, my different materials that I'm going to add in with the wing buds and the antenna to lay properly. Otherwise, they're just going to go straight up or straight out. So you need to get the collar kind of up to the same level of the body so the body doesn't push them outwards and upwards. Then I'll just trim that off. So then I'm going to take some small starling feathers I'm just going to take one from each side and we're going to tie those in as the wing buds. I'm just going to strip off the parts that I don't need so they don't get trapped underneath the thread. And we're going to tie these in almost just like you would tie in a, a jungle cock nail on one side and then the other. Just adjust them until they're sitting right alongside the body, about halfway down the, the length of the body. And I'll prepare another one. So I have an, a matching pair on either side. And just adjust that one till it's sitting nice on, on the other side as well. A lot of my steelhead flies, um, because they get so beat up, I, I tend to use super glue a fair amount. 
So this is another area with each one of these steps you can add a, a little bit of super glue and just make some extra durable. Just clean up the head a little bit. And then we're going to take some pheasant tail and just two, two barbs out of a nice long pheasant tail and we're going to add those as the antenna. And I'd say none of these these extra steps are really all that necessary, but they just really make for a, a great looking October caddis imitation by the time you're done. It's a very durable fly too. So we're going to make those just a little bit longer than the end of the body. And then we'll tie in the other side. And these will lay down once once the fly gets wet and is tracking through the water. And you can just snip those off or pull them off. So the final step here is we're going to add a little bit more wax. And then we're going to do, uh, I'm using a, a Caddis UV dubbing by Spirit River. Um, but any dark black dubbing will do just fine. And we'll just dub on a nice uh, light collar. And I'll work my way up just to behind the bead and we'll whip finish a few times. Again, my steelhead flies are really timed for durability, so I tend to use lots of whip finishes and lots of glue so they don't come undone on me. I'll add one more here for good measure. And then I'll use some, some head cement to finish this off. I kind of go back and forth between the traditional head cement. Here I'm using the Loon water-based head cement or super glue. They both work just fine. And then the final step, I'm going to take a dubbing pick and just pick out the collar just a bit, just to give that little, little extra. Simulate those, those legs that hang down underneath the caddis. This fly is really money when it gets wet. It just looks incredible. There's the Chewy October Caddis. It's a great summer steelhead fly.